decorations Start lining cats with sensation from For your eternal destination Stay tuned for the Larry W. Robinson Show. Celebrated media personality Larry W. Robinson presents Gospel Updates. Gospel Updates is the who, what, when, why, and where in the gospel music industry. Gospel Updates is a monthly magazine, weekly newsletter, video webcast, as well as a podcast. Gospel Updates has over 25 years of featuring people in the gospel music community. Gospel Updates magazine and the new Gospel Updates weekly newsletter document those who are continuing to help shape and write new chapters of this ever-evolving story of gospel. Go to www.gospelupdates.com. That's www.gospelupdates.com to get the latest issues. If you want to be featured, call or text 337-214-4046 or email gospelupdates at gmail.com for rates and details. Gospel Updates, featuring people in the gospel community for over 25 years. You're listening to The Larry W. Robinson Show. Thank you for tuning in to today's conversation. It's going to be good. We are talking about a God shift. My guest today, Shana Radler, has a movement titled A God Shift. Her book is A Divine Move from Disruption to Destiny. It's a God shift. The name of the book is A God Shift, A Divine Move from Disruption to Destiny. Shana Radler, I slept 100 miles a minute to literally have this conversation with you today. Thank you so very much for joining the conversation. It's an honor and a privilege. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm excited. As I was reading your book, I could see how God, oh, so many stories on how I literally had a God shift in my life several times. And so I know that people, even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, uh, people may not even recognize that this could literally be a God shift. So before we really get into all that, do me a favor, tell the listening audience a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how we can get in touch with you. Absolutely. So um, my name is Shana Rattler. I am the founder here at the God Shift, where we are committed to helping believers embrace disruption, collide with God's purpose, and move into a great destiny. That. Um, in addition to the work that I do here, I'm an ordained prophet. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. Um, I have a God Shift radio show, a God Shift podcast, a God Shift television show, all things a God Shift. Um, the website is a godshift.com. I try to make it easy for you. If you're on Instagram, it's at a God Shift. Like, I'm not trying to make it hard for everybody to find us. But overall, um, Larry, I just consider myself to be a bold, courageous, life changing child of God. I love it. I love it. And we have so many. I, th- I think another reason why I, I was excited to talk to you because we have so many similar things. I got the podcast and we're doing stuff on Roku TV. And and yeah, um, yeah so it's just amazing. So as I was reading the book, I could just see in my own life how at different points I had what I thought was the devil. I was like, I was rebuking and binding. <laughs> But in actuality, it was really just a, as you say in these words, a disruption, sometimes a a distraction from what we're into to get us to shift and turn to where God is and where he's trying to take us to. I think that is so key. Tell us a little bit about some examples of disruptions or distractions from where you are to shift into your divine destiny. So... I believe that any time that we are putting energy into something that is not on the path that God has planned for us, that he's going to disrupt our lives. And he uses unexpected circumstances. They're not always negative. You know, mm-hmm. when you think about Abram in Genesis, like, go to the place that I will show you. Yes. And, you know, I'm going to make you a blessing to many nations and you're going to be father of all these kids and all this other stuff. And but he had to leave everything that he knew. So I think that the the negative or the uh, traumatic, unexpected circumstances are the ones that we probably pay attention to the most and dedicate the most time and resources to. But your disruption could be 
you were asked to go to the other side of the country for a job where you make the most amount of money and are able to have the most impact and the most influence. But here's the thing about a disruption. First of all, my definition of a God shift is anytime a disruption in your life collides with God's purpose, but moves you into a greater destiny. So why does that happen? Because he's trying to get our attention. Like those of you who are listening, if you're parents, you know how to get your children's attention. And if you have more than one child, you probably recognize that the thing that it's going to take to get the attention of child one is not likely to be the same thing that's going to get the attention of child two. And so since God is our father, he knows what type of expect situations are going to get our attention. But here's the key, Larry. Are we going to see what it is that he wants us to see? Are we going to learn what it is that he wants us to learn? And for many of us, are we going to go wherever it is that he needs us next? So, so what's the, the examples, right? Mm-hmm. So like um, the bottom line is something is just off, right? Whether you're at a crossroads of whether or not you want to stay in the same direction or go, go in a different path, you're burned out, you're overwhelmed, um, or maybe you've accomplished everything you set out to accomplish, but you still just have this inkling in your belly that there's another level of success with your name on it. Whatever it is that you're experiencing, you know, you don't want to stay here. So what's the difference between, because like when I was going through some situations, you know, I started coming against the devil, uh, speaking in all kind of uh, serious tongue, you know, just doing all those things. But what's the difference between maybe, uh, and I'll say, a, I, even though I don't really subscribe to it, but let's say what people consider a satanic attack sure. or this is just God trying to get your attention. Because some people be rebuking something that God actually is allowing Well, let's be clear. The devil and his imps are busy. You know, spiritual warfare and attack is real. And sometimes the devil is just meddling. Um, But oftentimes, even if the devil is meddling, we have to recognize that God allows it to happen. He can't touch us without his permission. And so I say, regardless of where it came from, God is still using it for a reason. So, you know, it's not necessary, in my opinion, to get caught up in, did the Lord send it or did he allow (laughs) Satan to bring it? You have to ask yourself, Lord, what are you inviting me into? What am I supposed to learn from this? What am I supposed to see from this? What What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to become? Because why it's there doesn't matter. That's true. The the box is at the door. You're going to open it and you're going to do something with what's in it. Don't matter who delivered it. It's at your door. Right, 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 right. So when we have these moments and we, well, first of all, let's talk about this because um, as I was reading the book, I I was reminded, man, if I didn't know God's voice, I would have been not just disrupted and distracted, but then I would have still gotten off course because as you said, going back to the familiar, I would have started going back to what I knew worked before. But how do we, uh, why, how important or why is it so important that we start to recognize the voice of God so yeah. that when we, and, and the way I say it is you, in those times you really have to, and you said it in the book too, you have to be still, yeah. get quiet and understand what's happening and then listen for the voice of, voice of God to give you direction in which to go. Why is it so important that people really know the voice of God and not be just distracted and disrupted and then nothing happens? Exactly, exactly. You end up more, worse off than when you started. So I want to tell a small story about my second God shift. So my first God shift was all the Lord. The second one was my own dog. So in 2018, my very successful business and speaking career dried up because very long story short, the Lord was trying to get my attention that he was calling me to ministry. And again, he knows me. So he knows what, what to do to get my attention if I'm going to pay attention especially to anything that I think I'm the least likely choice for. Right. But my second God shift was this. I was in Bali, Indonesia in the spring of 2019. And the Lord very vividly showed me what my ministry was going to consist of. He said, you'll preach and teach in stadiums. You'll have a television show and you'll use your gifts to help celebrities and politicians. Now, I had no idea how that was going to come about. And I knew that although he could make it happen like that, it probably wasn't going to happen like on on the heels of 30 days of me landing back in the Mm -hmm. state, right? So I made the grave mistake, and this is why it's so important for you to not only hear what he says, but then follow what he says, is because I took that new vision and I filtered it through old perspective. Uh, Give an an example for somebody. Yeah, I was going to say, so what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Anytime you have been 
doing something a certain way for so long, or you've been in the same type of industry or career for so long, it's very difficult for you not to filter everything through that lens. Mm. So since I have been in the coaching world and the information world since 2007, even though I could see like a split screen of what he told me, I still went and created a coaching business out of it. Mm. Like I'm that person, Larry, that you could come to me and say, listen, I am going to start selling the most amazing beard products for men. I'm like, child, you know, you can start a coaching program telling them how to use it and charge $3,500. Like, I, that's just how ingrained that world was in my mind. And so, but here's why I made the mistake. Because I heard the word of the Lord and I wanted to do what he said. And this is what I know is that even when you don't know the how, you still have to be in motion. And I said, you know what? Well the, well, the word says, you'll bless what I put my hands to. So I need to be in some level of action. Well, here's the problem. I didn't even give him a version of the vision to bless. I didn't say like, you know, hey, well, if I'm gonna have a television show one day, let me start doing something on my YouTube channel. Now, I, went, I was way over here creating a coaching program. And it wasn't that it didn't help people, but I knew that it was way too small for me. I, I felt all year long that the anointing on my life was so much bigger than what it was that I created. And at the end of that year, when I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, none of this is working, not getting any traction, what needs to shift? That's when the God shift movement was, was, was created out of that moment. So I say that's a very long way to say that it is a very grave mistake, but a very easy mistake to make to filter new vision through old perspective. Even if you can hear his voice, we can still have a tendency to revert back to what's familiar. Even though I think he puts the new thing just far enough out of reach that we have to let go of the old thing, our tendency is to reach back to the old thing, even though that even though we're new, even though he's doing a new thing, mm -hmm. even though he, all things are being created new, we still have a tendency to want to reach for what's familiar, and we have and, to find that urge. And why do we do that? I, I think we're just creatures of habit. Um, I think we're creatures of habit. I think we're full of fear. I think we're full of doubt, whether we doubt ourselves or doubt God or doubt what he said. Um, it, and it's, it's much easier to reach back than it is to move forward because we know what's behind us, right? Especially take high performing leaders. You know, they have accomplishments, they have achievements, they have attitudes that they form that have gotten them to a great place in their life. So now you're asking that person to let go of what I know has performed well and go into the unknown, that's not easy to do, even if you've been walking with the Lord 50 years. That's true. Yeah. You know what? what, what um, there have been times in my life where I could sense a shift, but I was doing okay. I was comfortable. <laughs> I was like, well, why are you trying to shift me? And so it took me a little longer to shift. Yeah. But then there were times when when I feel like God said, oh, OK, this is how we go do this. And so he literally just, you know, as the as the, uh, the old saints of old would say, just burn down the bridges and everything I could go back to so yeah. that I would have to do a shift. When yeah. we get to those moments, those are still pivotal moments where you still have to make a decision to like, OK, there really is nothing to go back to. So yeah. I have to, to move. What are some spiritual tools that we can implement that would help us to move confidently in the destiny and the direction that God has for our lives? So first we have to recognize exactly what you said. Sometimes we're going to ask to be let go of trash and other times we're going to ask to be let go of treasures. Ooh, but here's, here's the thing. Here's the number one key. And it's kind of a spiritual principle, but maybe not. The how is none of your business. Mm. And that's what keeps us stuck is because we don't know how. Right? So the number one thing that we have to do is we have to recognize that the only thing the Lord needs is our yes. The how is his business. It's not, it was not on me to try to figure out how I'm going to open doors to celebrities and politicians because they're not going to come through my website. They're not going to download my, my, my free ebook. You know what I mean? Right. So, but if he says it, that settles it. And so I have to continue to move forward with what at least he told me to do last. Right. And I believe that too many of us are waiting to see what he's going to say instead of doing what he said. And that's another grave mistake. Um, the second spiritual tool is focus on who you need to become. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that it's any mistake that we're human beings and not human doings. But the number one thing we say is, oh, Lord, what do you want me to do? 
Well, if you will focus on who you need to become, in the book, I think I say that the definition of becoming is shedding your weaknesses and really amplifying your strengths so that you can become the highest and best version of yourself. When you do that, the doing is gonna take care of itself. When you focus on the role that you're supposed to be and play in the earth, you're gonna automatically be able to, in a better position to identify what to do. So if you don't know what to do, ask yourself, who do I need to become? I had to ask myself, what do I need to die to in my life? What are the character traits that I know aren't going to serve me well in this season, right? They may have served me well in marketplace, but what are going to be those characteristics that I know are not going to serve me well in ministry so that when he does bring the opportunities, when the stadiums come, well, the television shows are here, but when the stadiums come, when the celebrities and politicians come, that I, I am the person that I need to be because he's not going to give me anything that I don't have the shoulders to carry. Oh, that's, that, that's what we have to do. What do you do when God gives you a glimpse of your destiny, even puts you on what seems like a part of it? Like I remember, and I, I, I use an example, uh, when I was in maybe in my 20s, young 20s, I, um, I heard the Lord say that you're going to reach millions of people, just similar to what you said, you're going to be on stage and all that kind of stuff. And so I remember one time, I was, this is in my hometown, I was on... Um, not to not to make it too graphic, but I was on my way to the restroom to use the restroom, and I was at a concert, and a uh, a guy that went to my church was actually the stage manager for this concert. So he saw me going to the restroom. He said, "Well, wh why are you not on this on on the program tonight?" I said, "Well, because the other radio station is the primary station that pr promoted this event, and wow. so I'm just really here just just to to see the artist." He says, "Oh, okay." So when I came back from the, the restroom, he says, I want you to introduce the next group. And uh, I was like, well, listen, the, uh, I, I'm not, I'm on the radio, but I'm not on that station. He says, I don't care about that. I just want you to introduce the, to, to the next group. I said, oh, okay, well, it just so happened the next group was the choir from my church. <laughs> so I got to introduce, you know, my choir. And so as we were getting ready to do this, the artist said to kind of pause a little bit to kind of hold it. So he says to go out there and, and encourage the people because we have to kind of stall a little bit. And so I'm on the stage, got the mic on my hand, doing what I was asked to do. And in that moment, God reminded me of what he said he was going. Now, this is a, a, a civic center full of people. Yeah. And he reminded me, hey, I told you you were going to be. So he literally gave me a glimpse of what my future was going to be. Here's the thing. What if I would have, and that's my question for you, if God gives you a glimpse, he sets you in a setting where you can kind of see where you're going and you think that's it. <laughs> what if I would have stopped and said, okay, well, he fulfilled what he said he was going to do in my life. Yeah. How do people navigate when God puts them in areas and arenas and say, hey, I just want to give you a glimpse of where you're going, but I still need you to prepare yourself is really where I'm trying to get to. Yeah. So how do we deal with those realities? I think the very first thing that we have to do, even if we don't believe it, is say, yes, I am that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am ready for that. Because oftentimes we feel like we're not ready. And, you know, in, in, in Ephesians 2 and 10, and I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. but it basically says that we have been created for good works mm -hmm. that the Lord prepared beforehand yeah. for us to do, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? That means that you may not know how in the heck you're going to do whatever mm -hmm. it is that he asks you to do. But he knows what you need, whether it's the word to say in the hour, whether it's, right. you know, what, whatever it is, um, we have to recognize that we're all ready, ready, at least ready enough to start. Because mm. there's so many things in life, whether it's business or media or any new journey that we're embarking on, that you can't sit at your desk and do what I call create in a vacuum and map out and plan out everything that's going to happen from the beginning of the, from idea to conception. It's usually not until you start moving that you realize what the real factors are. So you have to tell yourself, I don't know what the heck this is going to look like, but I am going to convince myself that I'm at least ready enough to start. Because once you take a step, it goes back to what I said earlier. Most of you all are, are frustrated because you're still in the same spot and it's because you haven't moved, right? Like think about our GPS. Where do you live, Larry? Houston, Texas. So you're in Houston and I'm in Dallas, right? So even though it's not that far apart, if I make up in my mind 
that I want to come to your church tomorrow. And you give me the address and I type it in, but I never pull out of my garage because I'm so worried about like, what's the traffic going to be like? And, you, you know, what is, is it going to rain? And, you, you know, it, am I going to run into a detour? Why does any of that matter? Because my GPS is going to course correct me. So what am I saying? Mm. What I'm saying is, is that you have to at least start. And the Lord is so committed to his results. He's not going to let you make a mistake. I say everything is figure outable. And right. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm, <laughs> I can do that. We can make up words if we want to. My, my, back when I used to be in the Baptist church, my pastor used to say, I'm a Baptist preacher. I can make up words if I want to. I love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so yes, everything is figure outable, but we first have to move. We can't be so ingrained to the scripture that the steps of a good man are ordered. Stop asking the Lord to order your steps if you're not going to move your feet. Because what the scripture says is that the, the steps of a good man are ordered meaning past tense. So you just got to start walking, even if your steps are laced with uncertainty. So remind yourself, I am that. Mm -hmm. And just keep saying it until you believe it. Mm -hmm. And then when you take a step, he's going to open it. You know, I was on a podcast the other day and the lady was talking about the scripture that, that the Lord is, you know, that he's a light into our path. She, he didn't say nothing about being a light into the distance because you don't have to worry about what's in the distance until you get on the path. Right. And then when you get to the next step, he's going to be a light into your path. And when you get to the next step, he's going to be a light into your path. But we're so worried about the fact that we don't know what's off in the distance that we don't move from the starting point. Mm. It's disrespectful. <laughs> you know what it makes it makes me think that because you know i'm a planner yeah and so i like to put the details and then this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen but what, but what i like about god though and it's and it and life with god is so amazing because uh he's spontaneous like once you i've used this example on an on a interview before but um he told abram go to the land that i will show you will show you yeah, we'll, we'll, that's what I was trying to say. We'll show you. In other words, like get up and go. And as you go, you'll figure out lessons along the way. Yeah. And I think life is exciting I, I like that. Go, and this is what you're going to do. And this is how you're going to do it. And this is what you're going to encounter on the way. No, I, mm -hmm. I will show you. Right, right, right. And I will equip you to handle what happens along the way. You know what to say. Yeah, yeah. This is good. I wish everyone get a copy of this book, A God Shift. Um, a divine move from disruption to destiny. It's a movement. And I want uh, you to just tell the listening audience a little bit more about where they can get the book. And then also you have a surprise for them. I do. So I have a free gift and it's called When God Says Shift. And inside that guide, it's going to cover the four shifts that are going to be required. If you want to embrace disruption and you want to get into a greater destiny, a, a higher level of possibility, a higher level of, of expectancy, that gift is, or that guide rather, is going to show you what the four shifts are that are going to be required. Whether you're shifting from, from good to great or bad to better, <laughs> right? It's going to show you what those four shifts are. And they can get that at GodSaysShift.com. That's God says shift. Dot com. But the book, the radio show, the t-shirts, everything that's pertaining to a God shift, including the guide, is on the website, um, agodshift.com. All right. Shana Rattler, I'm so grateful that we had this conversation today. Um, I just look forward to some more exciting things happening with you. Again, go to agodshift.com to get the book and then tag her. Do the uh, hashtag agodshift and send her some of your uh, God shifts that's happening along of the yeah. way in your life today. Uh, Shana Rattler, thank you again for joining the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Bless you. Stay, Stay tuned, tuned for the Larry, for the Larry w. w. Robinson, Robinson Show. Show. Celebrated media personality Larry W. Robinson presents Gospel Updates. Gospel Updates is the who, what, when, why, and where in the gospel music industry. Gospel Updates is a monthly magazine, weekly newsletter, video webcast, as well as a podcast. Gospel Updates has over 25 years of featuring people in the gospel music community. Gospel Updates magazine and the new Gospel Updates weekly newsletter document those who are continuing to help shape and write new chapters of this ever-evolving story of gospel. Go to www.gospel.com. 
www.gospelupdates.com. That's www.gospelupdates.com to get the latest issues. If you want to be featured, call or text 337-214-4046 or email gospelupdates at gmail.com for rates and details. Gospel Updates, featuring people in the gospel community for over 25 years. You're listening to The Larry W. Robinson Show. Let's talk about it. It's a man. 